Catherine. Um, thank you very much. I'd like to thank the IAEA. Uh, Irish Aid is delighted, as ever, with um, the, uh, the opportunity we have to support this development series seminar. Um, uh, and we're very glad to uh, welcome um, President Nwanzi here to talk to us about, uh, about inequality. <coughs> Uh, inequality is um, a major issue, um, particularly in this year of 2015, uh, when we're in the process of uh, developing and agreeing uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. And we know that um, we that, that at this stage that we will be uh, agreeing on on, a, on a, a goal number one, which will be about eradicating extreme poverty, uh, probably by by 2030. Uh, and I think. In terms of inequality, we, we need to recognise that the experience since we, we agreed on the MDGs and in, indeed since the decades before uh, is that equality uh, is not a natural outcome of development processes. Actually, somewhat on the contrary, uh, as, as economies and states develop, um, people who are poor and who are marginalised from economic activity uh, and marginalised from, uh, from, from political power, the people who lack capital, lack access to productive assets, uh, they do disproportionately badly out of the benefits from development. Uh, and and, and uh, I think we, we've, we've seen where, where public policies, the experience over the last uh, uh, 15 years has showed us that where public policies... Uh, fail to address these inherent, inherent disadvantages in the starting points which people have, if you fail to have active public policies in place to, to address people's difficulties in accessing the benefits of development, well then inequality uh, will increase uh, with, with levels of, of development. And I think we've seen that. We, we, we know that at aggregate level, uh, MDG1 on reducing uh, poverty by half has been reached at aggregate level uh, globally. But we also know that that has actually come about because of very good performance in a relatively small number of fairly large countries. And there are many countries, actually, where, where, um, uh, where, where progress hasn't been uh, so good and, and where, um, uh, you know, where, where those policies and actions by government haven't been in place and you've, where you, you have had significant rates of economic growth, actually poverty hasn't, uh, hasn't reduced and inequality um, has increased. Um, and I think that, you know, when we think about it, at one level, that, that increase in inequality that we're seeing with very high rates of, of, of global progress, I know we've slowed down in the last the last five years, but high rates of growth in the overall global economy, inequality increasing, it is, it is something that is morally un unacceptable, but it also really you know, extracts a high price in terms of exclusion, marginalisation and, 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 and exploitation. And that, those kind of things, the marginalisation of people um, uh, and their exclusion actually um, affects the sustainability of the economic growth that we have, but also affects social cohesion. It's a driver of conflict, uh, and it is, it's a threat uh, to long-term sustainability. And as, as we go forward into, uh, with the new set of goals, we really need to um, seriously uh, address it. You know, inequality constrains the constructive and productive base, uh, sorry, the, the economic and productive base uh, of any society. It limits the spread of growth across sectors. It limits the spread of growth among people. Less people are involved in, in the generation of wealth. Less people uh, have, have access to it. And that reduces both the rate of growth, how well it is sustained, and the effect, extent to which it, it, it reduces uh, poverty. So inequality in itself is a huge problem. Gender-based uh, discrimination and the inequality that, that, that comes out of that is perhaps the most pervasive um, and, and persistent form of, of, of inequality uh, uh, that there is. Um, and it's particularly um, uh, pernicious because people who, are, uh, you know, people who are already extremely poor are further disadvantaged in their own households uh, and, 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 in, their, and in, in their own communities. And addressing that issue, actually addressing the inequality within poor communities and poor households, inequalities that women face, uh, is, is, is critical for addressing inequality on a wider scale and for, um, for addressing um, 
um, for, for addressing poverty. Um, just going back to the post-2015 agenda, you know, it, the expectations are really high around it. You know, and if we, we are setting ourselves a target for achieving uh, the er eradication of poverty within the next 15 years, that kind of the thinking is that it's kind of based on the reasonable progress. We got halfway with the MDGs, so we'll make the rest of the way. But it doesn't work like that, you know, because that, the, in effect, uh, the poverty has reduced in a relatively small number of countries. And, it's, and those countries will not contribute to the further significant reductions in poverty because they've already addressed the issue in a very significant way. It really needs to be addressed in countries where inequality uh, is actually getting worse. You know? And the ability of those countries to reduce their inequalities <laughs> and to address poverty is actually what's going to determine whether it is possible to get to a zero uh, extreme poverty by... Um, by, by, by 2030. So it's a transformation that's required in countries which have been doing pretty poorly uh, uh, up until now. That's what we need to address. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, we talk about the unfinished business of the MDGs. Well, well, we don't want to be in 2030 with the unfinished business of the SDGs. And un, un, unless we do address this, um, <clears throat> we, uh, we are likely to face that, to be faced with that context. To address inequality, it does, I've talked about public policies and actions, it requires decisions over public resources and public uh, uh, and policies at global, national uh, and at local levels. And those decisions are actually ones that would favour the interests of poor people over the interests of other people. Um, favour vulnerable and marginalised people over well-connected and powerful people. So it's a difficult thing to do. It really requires a lot more work on kind of inclusive governance and governance institutions um, uh, at all levels. And we need to focus on, 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 this, on these aspects of empowerment and, and, uh, and inclusion in, 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 in policy making and, and resource allocations uh, as we go forward. And I think it's really great that we have President Nwanzi here uh, to talk about uh, how, to, uh, how to address inequality because IFAD uh, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, it, it's, it's really a unique organisation um, in, in the multilateral system is in that it focuses specifically on rural poverty, on, on rural communities, on poor and excluded people. It makes IFAD a really good partner for us and for Irish Aid, IFAD has always been uh, an important partner both multilaterally, but also very importantly, when we sit with governments and talk about what's going on in the rural economy and what's going on uh, in, in, in agric agricultural policy uh, in, in country. And IFAD is a strong, is a strong partner uh, for, this, for that. I'd just like to quote, you know, IFAD had its governing council uh, in February where it agreed the kind of um, the, the funding model and the policy priorities for the, for the next, uh, for the next uh, three years. And I just quote a couple of things from 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 that uh, from uh, what the governing council decided. IFAD's strategic vision, vision is one of inclusive and sustainable rural transformation. This requires the emergence of a productive, commercial, sustainable, and inclusive agricultural sector, which, on the one hand, delivers high-quality foods for a growing population agricultural products for further processing, and a range of critical environmental services and global goods. And, on the other, offers decent incomes to smallholder farmers and, in particular, uh, to youth uh, and, and women. Um, IFAD's specific task is to support those rural households and communities who may otherwise be excluded from economic opportunities and unable to move out of poverty without targeted public support. Those groups typically lack assets. They're often marginalized and excluded from mainstream processes of economic development, and they usually include women, youth, and in some contexts, indigenous peoples. IFAD's goal is to enable them to gain increasingly remunerative, sustainable, and resilient livelihoods, and help them move out of and beyond poverty. So that's a very specific mandate, a very specific focus. So I'll now give the floor to President Monza to talk to us about how IFAD addresses inequality. Thank you very much.